This is video 54 on MicroPython and LVGL using a standard RPI Pico USB board. In this video, we take a fresh look at building LVGL displays on RPI Pico. Please let us know in the comments if you like this example, or let us know if you have suggestions to improve it. For this effort, we mounted an RPI Pico USB board and an inexpensive 320 by 240 resolution integrated display on a breadboard. As this channel covers multiple small system solutions over time, please subscribe to stay informed and click like as that really helps. Our goal for this effort is to set up a simple LVGL example on an RPI Pico. We will demonstrate our slider and button examples, present the display in the, in the wiring, we'll discuss the GitHub files, and we'll walk through the code. The program files are at the GitHub site that is mentioned in the description and endnotes for this video. Let's look at two examples. First, our test button underscore display program. The program is already running. We display a button near the center and press it. We then see a message on the development software. It's, it's hiding in the background. It's printed out the message, clicked button one. Let's stop the program and reset to load the test slider program. We'll click the red stop button. We're gonna type reset to reset Thony. Now we've loaded the test slider display program and we're gonna run it. This program displays a slider and a label widget. Touching the screen along the slider's base will grow the slider. And it will change the value posted in the label. We use these two programs to verify any new display. Running them first demonstrates that the display is wired correctly Touching the button verifies the touch driver senses a touch. Since the button is centered in the display, any touch close to the center should action the event callback. Running the slider verifies if, an, if the X direction is reversed. If the slider only responds in the vertical direction, then the XY values in the touch driver need to be swapped. The firmware includes MicroPython and LVGO. LVGO is short for Light and Versatile Graphics Library. Best of all, both MicroPython and LVGO are free and open source software. The display we are using is the ILI9341 display. The display has an integrated touchscreen and an SD card adapter on its back. The display usually includes the mail header for the display and touchscreen, you can use the picture here to show, help you locate the part at your retailer. We will mention our part in the endnotes. Please notice that the pins have display pin names. The ILI9341 display is popular, and so it is available in multiple sizes. However, they are all 240 by 320. Most touchscreen drivers assume the display is the 2.4 inch type running in portrait mode. We modify the driver to handle all three types. Since we default to the 2.4 inch type ourselves, however, you can easily adjust the setting in the display driver file. Here is an example of the RPI Pico. The other standard PICOs have the same pinouts. The pins have names like GP16. Drivers usually use the short pin name like 16. Sometimes people use the tiny gray pin numbers, but we will only use the short names shown in green. To configure the display, you must load driver files to the flash area on the board. First, you should edit the driver file to indicate how you connect wires to the display pin names. This slide is showing the default connections. For example, GP18 is 
wired to the display's SCK pin. You will also need a jumper wire on the breadboard to the display's T underscore CLK pin. The pin names that begin as T underscore are actually for the touchscreen component on the display. The GitHub site is the location of our deployable files organized by videos. For this video, look for Video 54 directory. Under it are three folders, firmware, flash, and desktop. Before we load the firmware, let's discuss the driver files. The diagram shows how the program in the white box interacts with the various modules. In the dotted blue box are files containing modules, often called drivers. Typically, you only need to modify the display driver file, shown in yellow, once in order to configure the wiring. You can look at the other driver files, shown in green and blue, but usually they are fine as is. Other MicroPython code files and drivers can also be stored on the flash. Meanwhile, the modules in the red dotted box are the modules in the firmware. They are usually C code that are compiled as part of building the firmware. Any of these modules in the flash and in the firmware can be imported into your program. Because we are using a development tool like Thony, we can run our program from our desktop. Later, we can copy the program to the flash where it becomes another importable module. In deployment, we load the RPI Pico USB board and invoke our program. To deploy the firmware, disconnect your USB board and hold down the boot button. Continue holding the boot button as you reconnect the USB board. A virtual drive called RPI-RP2 will appear. Drag the firmware.uf2 file to the virtual drive. Wait about a minute for it to load. When it's done, it's good practice to disconnect and reconnect without holding the boot button. Start Thorny and verify you selected the proper USB port. You do this by clicking the three lines in the bottom right corner of Thony. When you do this, a little box pops up and indicates several different MicroPython versions. In our case, it's only showing Raspberry Pi Pico, so we can select it and we want to select it for a specific USB port. And then click the red stop icon in the toolbar. Then there should be a file pane that opens. At the top, you can click to navigate to the folder where you placed all the files for, for video 54. Here's where I have all the files. As you can see, I have all the, the driver files under the flash directory. I can select these and then right click and there'll be a feature called upload to. And I just need to select that and it will upload all these files to the Raspberry Pi Pico virtual drive. Assuming you wired the display the same way as, the, as this video, then go back up and locate the desktop folder. Select the test button display program. Click the green run icon and the display should update and display a button. Click the button with your finger or stylus. The message clicked button 1 will appear in the Thony shell. Next, let's load the test slider display program and verify if it works. Okay, let's verify the, the, the slider program. As you can see, I can click anywhere along the x-axis in the center of this display where we placed the slider, and it should respond. If it doesn't respond, let's, let's say it's like this, and it only responds if you move your stylus across the vertical direction, then that means that the axis, the xy, the coordinates have been swapped and you will need to adjust them in the display driver. All right, let's stop the program and go look at those things in the display driver. We are looking at the display driver. The driver starts 
with statements to import LPGO and the display and touch drivers. Now we can scroll down and see where the SPI communication is configured. There's an SPI instance configured for the display and a second one configured for the touch. Notice they're using the same SPI0 port on the Raspberry Pi Pico and they're using the exact same pins. Next there's constants that are used to set the mode of the display. The, the display will normally want to operate in portrait but I like running it in landscape, so I'll set my displays in landscape mode. Here you can see we've configured the display to be an ILI9341. We're using the SPI object above and these various pins that we discussed earlier. And finally, we set the rotation to that ILI9341 landscape mode. Notice I have commented out a couple statements below this one. Say I'm using the 2.8 inch or the 3.2 inch ILI9341 display, then I will want to uncomment this line. So I'll have both lines, this the first one and the second one. And that's because it's going to pick up this the screen uh, resolution. It's going to configure the, the uh, display in the uh, LVGL library. And finally, we've got code for the touch screen. Then you'll see various functions that we use to compensate for differences in those screen sizes. And finally, there's the routine here uh, to do the touch screen. And that's it for the display driver. All right, let's look at the test button. So this is a program that's going to run on our desktop. We begin again by importing the LVGL library machine for a reset and the display driver. So this is now going to pick up the display from the display driver. We set the current screen by using this LVGL call to object. And this is our parent object within our, our program. So all other objects will, will build off of this SCR. We then set a border ar around the screen. Here we're setting a style for the button. Now we're defining the button, which we're putting in the center of the, of the display and applying its button style. And buttons come with a child widget, which is usually a label. So here we've added a label and its parent is this button. We set its text to one and we center it inside the button and we give color to the text and to and we select the font size. Finally, we define an action for our button using this callback. So add this add event callback and specify this callback routine. You tell it when to trigger. Here we said whenever the button is clicked and then it'll run this routine. And that's it. Let's look at the slider. The slider has very similar imports as, as we just saw on the button. It has the display just like in the button. It defines a parent screen just like we did in the button and a border. To create the slider, uh, we add this slider1 is equal to lv.slider widget, and then we center it in the middle of the display. Now we create an independent label. Notice it's using SCR instead of slider. So it, it can be placed anywhere on the screen. What we did is align it to the top of the screen, just, just below and we set its color and the font size, and we gave it some text. Here we've gave it progress zero. Now we finish the slider definition by giving it a callback event. In this case, we're going to format 
the string in the label using this function here. So the slider one will get the current value and then get formatted into a text string and then written to the label. And it's called where we provide the routine name, we provide the trigger, which in this case is anytime the value changes, and that's it. So fairly simple. In summary, in this video, we introduced LVGL and the display, which is ILI 9341. We discussed the Raspberry Pi Pico's wiring. We discussed the GitHub site and how to deploy the code. And we walked through the files. The benefit is simple and very flexible code that can be updated without needing to go through a compile and flash sequence over and over. We, we can make changes and, and see them immediately. Hopefully, you have a better understanding of MicroPython with LVGL. Please comment if you feel other changes are needed. I hope this helps you with your LVGL MicroPython coding. Thank you for listening.